The trays are next, and I've got some material milled here, and I hope this shows up here. I, I'm going to uh, do a tray at the bottom that looks like that. So cut it in half, then cut that in half, then cut that in half. And the, the top tray, which is going to slide back and forth, uh, basically looks like that one. On the previous box I made, I, I made the compartments a little too small. I, I think on this side I cut that one in half. And what I found is my wife likes to put like uh, bracelets and stuff in there. So, so I'm going to leave one that's a little bit bigger. So, so once I figured that out, I, I figured out how, what length of parts I need, just, just roughly. And I've, I've actually got numbers here for two different boxes. So I milled up what I think is enough material to, to do this box. I need about 63 inches. This is 68 inches. And I think that's conservative. So I, I think I'll be okay if I, if I uh, plan this out correctly and don't have a lot of waste at the ends. So this was, this was a couple of pieces of uh, a three quarter inch or one piece of three quarter inch birch that I ripped in half and then I resawed and, and uh, carefully planed to tr you know, try and keep stuff fairly straight. It's, it's pretty straight. It's, it's maybe a little bit warped still, but you know, these are going to be short pieces, so I don't think that's going to matter. So I wanted to use a lighter colored wood because you're looking into a box. You want to see things that are in there. If the wood was dark, it just makes it a little bit harder to see. So I'm using the beach. That's what I used at the bottom. A bottom tray is not going to have a bottom. It's just going to be the dividers. And of course, the bottom is the bottom of the box. The top tray will have a bottom in it. And I found, I, I had some uh, nice eighth inch uh, plywood. I think this is for making like model airplanes and things. It's, it's, well, I think it's like six ply, eighth inch plywood. So it's really nice stuff. It's nice and smooth and flat. Uh, you know, it's obviously it's overkill strength wise, but, but that's what I have. And it turns out it's, it's just about the right size. I hope that's going to work. I might actually have to make that, that one uh, trade slightly smaller just to make this work. So anyway, I'm, I'm going to uh, cut these to length uh, pretty close. I'll miter the ends. I'm going to miter all the corners and then I'll shoot them to sneak up on the fit because I want, you know, I want a nice fit for the outside. So I'll do the outside first and then I'll start filling in the dividers. So I cut these on my chop saw. I used a, uh, just a zero clearance piece to back them up. You know, of course, cut it 45 degrees. They're, I don't know, maybe a 30 second long. So, so now I'm going to shoot the ends using my uh, shooting board and donkey's ear and get them so they just, they just fit, uh, you know, right, right inside there. I've got the uh, pieces cut, the four that go around here, and I've taped them together you know, like I did when, when I glued up the box. So what I'm going to do is, is do a fit check here and see, see if this fits nicely inside uh, the box here. So notice I... I didn't tape, well, I had the tape up on the high side so I can do the fit check down here. I'm not really expecting it to fit where the tape is, assuming I did this correctly. So if I slide that in there. Yeah, that, that fits really nice. And yeah, see it stops when it hits the tape. So that's, that's great, that's a nice snug fit. So as, as I was cutting these and shooting them to, to fit in the box, I did leave them just slightly short of, of these dimensions because I knew once, once I had them taped together, they'd be slightly bigger than just each individual piece. So that's, that's working great. I'm very happy with that. So next up, I'll, I'll take the rest of my material here. 
I'll shoot an end, you know, mark the length, cut it, shoot it to fit, and continue on making the rest of this. Uh, I'll do the bottom and then I'll come back uh, when I do the, the upper tray because that's going to be a little different because of the bottom. I'm working on the uh, the top tray now, so I've got the two the two end pieces made, so they're they're the same length as these. The side pieces now are going to be this length. Uh, I basically want the the top one to cover this when it's uh, when it's slid to one side. So I'm just going to uh, mark mark that based on this length. And then I'll go ahead and, and cut the rest of these. Got the top tray uh, taped together now, and it it matches up nicely with the bottom tray. I've double checked here. My my plywood is just big enough to go uh, you know between here, and, I, and I'm going to be creating a rabbit on the underside here that that uh, plywood fits into. So it's just just big enough to work. It's certainly uh, Big enough that way. The next thing I'm going to do is is cut that rabbit. I'll just do that on my uh, router table. Uh, one thing nice about uh, this type of construction with miters, the the rabbit is through on each one. I don't have to do any stopped miters, so that'll be pretty straightforward. I'll just cut the uh, dimension this way to make sure I can get the plywood in there and it fits. And then, of course, the, the depth will be the same as the plywood. So I'll just use the plywood to set the depth of the router bit. And I should be uh, good to go there. The dividers now are going to be a little bit shorter than this. They're going to match the dimension from the, uh, you know, the, the rabbit to the top. So I'll go ahead and rip those a little bit shorter, and uh, then we'll come back together and do a test fit. I've got all the parts cut now, and I've got the uh, the top tray here. Now, it turned out I, I thought I had made the rabbit a little bit small just so I could, you know, tweak the bottom to fit, but it turned out it was really close. Um, so so it looks fine. Um, I cut it to, uh, to I guess, width. Uh, here's the uh, top. I just checked with my wife. She preferred four small. I was originally planning to not put this one in. All right, time to glue up the trays. I'm going to do them like I did the box. I've got the uh, parts uh, taped together and same, uh, same thing as before. Okay, I'll let those dry and then I'll glue in the rest of the parts. The glue has dried now on the uh, outer part of the trays. I uh, sanded the outside of this. Now, I should, should have pointed out earlier, before I glued all these up and, and even cut these to size, I uh, hand planed both surfaces of, of all the parts and, and double checked the thickness so they're all pretty darn close. So anyway, so once this was together, I had a touch of squeeze out on the corners. Uh, I went to fit this in, and it was it was kind of snug, uh, tighter than I wanted in order to. Well, not this is this one's going to come out, but but anyway, it was it was a little snug. I didn't want to have to force it in. So 
I sanded the uh, the outside of this a little bit just to get it to fit a little better, and uh, it fits it fits nicely now. You just have to make sure it goes in straight. I should also point out that the when I glued this up, I made sure that this top edge has a uh, similar look. You know, some of, some of the ray flake is a little different on on this side, so I'm going to put this side up and then same for this one. So this this fits in here nicely if I can get this in without getting it crooked and yeah, there it goes and then this one sits in on top and it slides nicely it's slightly out of square I see a little bit of a gap there but I'm, I can live with that uh, so that works great and and I had to sand this in a little bit too it was it was a touch touch snug there. Next, I'm going to glue in the bottom. So I trimmed it so it fits in here nicely. It does fit a little better one way than another. So I've, I've got a, a couple of marks on here, just some pencil marks. So, so that fits in there great. It's all nice and flush. So I'll, I'll put a little, little bit of glue around the edge of that and uh, you know to avoid squeeze it on the inside I'll glue that in and and then uh, while that's drawing I will uh, cut uh, or double check my divider length I think yeah this one's a touch long it, it would fit in there but you know now that everything's glued up I'm just going to double check yeah see now that's a little tight I don't know I'll see so once I'm all set there I'll show you how I, I glue all those in. So this this rabbit is not very big, so it's definitely a little tricky getting the glue in here and not not getting so much on here that I get some squeeze out. So I don't I don't mind squeeze out on the on the top or well, on this edge, but I might wipe that. There we go. So I've got this a slight angle, so I'm keeping the inner edge dry. There we go. Line up my mark. There we go. So, like I said, a little, little squeeze out here. I'm not worried about that. will not show it's on the bottom. I can easily sand it off. And just a hint of squeeze out there. It's going to be fine. So I'll put a couple of spring clamps on there, and I think I'll be ready to go. Okay, next I'm going to glue in the uh, dividers here. So I've, I've got this one in place and I, I double checked the uh, dimension where it's going to sit by using the next divider. I've put a couple of pencil marks here so I know where to put the glue. So, of course, it, it's a little tricky getting the glue in there because, you know, this slides right in. I'm, once again, I'm trying to avoid some, some uh, squeeze out. And, uh, you know, it's going to be what it's going to be. Now, fortunately, this is not something that really gets any load. So it's not like it has to be a super great glue joint. I could maybe, you know, pin nail with a 23 gauge pin nailer, but I, I didn't do that in the other one. It's lasted for years, so I'm not too concerned about that. So I'll just... Squeeze a little bit of glue in there and, and we'll make this happen here. So I'm just going to put just a couple of dabs there in the right spot and then a little bit on the end grain here. Yeah, once again, I want to, one of these sides looks better than the other. 
so I'm just going to slide this in and my pencil marks are going to help me. Now I am trying a little bit to put a little outward force on here, but I, of course I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to break my miter joint. So I'll get it. Oh, that's moving all over the place. Now there's glue in there. Okay, so I'm going to slide in the next piece uh, to make sure that's in the right spot. So that checks out there. Slide it over here. Wait, already I can feel that's a little hard to move, so that's a good sign. Take a hammer here, make sure that's down flat, a bit of squeeze out there. Then one just last check, one, two, that looks great, I'll pull that out, just in case. Uh, there we go, and uh, I'll continue doing that for the rest of the rest of the parts. This last piece, I've got my square set here to make sure it's centered there. Looks good. So once again, I'll put my pencil marks. Okay, make sure it's not glued to the bench. Good to go. Okay, I've got everything in there. Now, I uh, originally was not planning to put this one in, but I talked to my wife about it. She wanted four, four uh, compartments there. So that all looks good. Now, I did get a little squeeze out the bottom, so I've got a, a semi-sharp chisel here I'll use to get that out of there. It's so small. It's not any little amount of glue I get on the on the bottom there is not going to show and I'm not going to put finish on the uh, on this. So once uh, once all this glue dries, then I'll, I'll sand everything flush. It's, it's made a little bit of mismatch here and there. And uh, then we can wrap this up.